So the learning objective for today is I can continue to use adverbs and conjunctions to start my sentences and can edit my work. Hi Year 3, so today is our final lesson on Theseus and the Minotaur. We will keep looking um, over the next uh, couple of weeks at the same book by Marcia Williams, but this is our last lesson on Theseus and the Minotaur. So I hope you enjoyed doing your writing yesterday and starting your paragraphs one and two of our description, pretending that we're Theseus going into that labyrinth and killing the Minotaur. And today, as you all know, we're going to finish off our piece of descriptive writing. So what you'll need today, so you need to be able to see today's sheet. Um, it would also be helpful if you had your plan that you did on Wednesday in front of you. You might also want to refer to some of the sentence starters that were on yesterday's sheet. That could be helpful as well. So what we're going to start doing today is I'm going to read out to you, a bit like we did yesterday, um, my waggle, what a good one looks like, for paragraph three. Then you'll be able to look at your plan and work out what you're going to put into your paragraph three. Remember, our learning objective that we're really focusing on is starting our sentences in more interesting ways. So we're not just starting I, I, I. Instead, we're trying to use adverbs, words that describe verbs, and conjunctions, words that join parts of sentence or clauses together to start our sentences. And it just makes it sound more interesting. So... I'm going to read out my waggle for paragraph three. And as I read it out, I'd like you to listen out for those adverbs and those conjunctions that come at the start of my sentences. This waggle is also on the sheet for today, so you can read it at the same time if you want to. So paragraph three, um, as you'll remember, is the bit where you're finding your way out of the labyrinth. So you've killed a minotaur and then you're going back through the labyrinth. Excitedly. I turned back and looked for the magic thread and followed it through the narrow passageways of the labyrinth. Eventually, I heard voices and I saw the other children. As soon as they saw me holding the Minotaur's hideous head, they started cheering. When Ariadne heard the cheering, she opened the door to the labyrinth and we escaped. Breathing a sigh of relief, I realised that I'd beaten the Minotaur and could now travel back to Athens. So... In this paragraph, you're describing your journey back through the labyrinth. Take care not to rush it. We want to describe what happens as you go back through the labyrinth following that thread. Then meeting the other children. Then being totally overjoyed to see you. You've actually succeeded. You've actually killed a minotaur. Then Ariadne, you'll remember, she opens the door when she hears all that cheering. And then you get out and you set sail straight away back home to Athens. So you probably heard some of the adverbs and conjunctions that I used to start my sentence. So I used adverbs like excitedly, eventually, and I used conjunctions such as as soon as and when. So make sure that as you're continuing, you keep up using some of those adverbs and conjunctions to start your sentences. It's probably good if you pause the video now, find a nice place to do some writing, and um, get your paragraph three um, completed and then turn the video back on. So we're now going to move on to um, the editing part like we always do with our writing we're going to check over it and improve our writing by editing. Um, when we're editing we always are going to check through things like spellings, um, any words that are missing out um, and our punctuation but we are going to have a real focus on our punctuation as we're editing today. Remember punctuation means things like capital letters, full stops, inverted commas, commas, okay, apostrophes. So the first thing with that in mind that I'd like you to check is to check your capital letters and your full stops. You might want to pause the video, check through your writing, check all of your capital letters and full stops are um, correct. Second part, now you might not need this, but see if you needed any speech marks, or remember the other word for them uh, is inverted commas. Now, you won't need speech marks around the whole of writing. You are writing in the first person, but you don't need speech marks around that. You'll only need speech marks or inverted commas if somebody else 
in your description is talking, maybe Ariadne says something, or the other children say something, then you would need speech marks. So if you had, hooray, shouted the children, then, as you can see there, I have put speech marks around hooray that the children shouted. So number one, you're checking capital letters and full stops. Number two, check whether or not you need any speech marks or inverted commas. Now, the third part that we're going to look at is commas and this is leading on from the work that we did on Tuesday about putting commas after um, our adverbs at the beginning of our sentences and in those sentences that we've started with conjunctions. So let's just think about that for a moment. So if you started a sentence with an adverb which hopefully you've done a few times in your writing um, like this one here suddenly for the adverb I heard a terrifying roar then you might remember from Tuesday that what you'll actually need to do is put a little comma immediately after the adverb. So there's uh, our adverb, suddenly, so immediately after it, the little comma that starts on the line just drops below. Suddenly I heard a terrifying roar. So what I'd like you to do now is go through your writing, see if you've used any adverbs at the beginning of your sentence. And uh, if you have, then you need to put a little comma just immediately after the adverb. Now we're going to think about where to put commas in sentences that have started with a conjunction. So here we've got a sentence, when Ariadne heard the cheering, she opened the door. You'll notice that this sentence starts with the conjunction when. So because the sentence has started with a conjunction, we're going to need to use a comma somewhere in that sentence. Now you'll remember from uh, Tuesday's lesson, hopefully, that the comma comes in between the two parts of the sentence if you start a sentence with a conjunction. Remember also that I said this is a bit tricky and this is meant to be a bit of an extra challenge. If you're finding this a bit trickier then do not worry, you might just have a go. So if you've got your conjunction at the beginning of the sentence like when, we want to put our comma in between the two parts of the sentence. Let me read it out and see if you can hear where the comma, the little pause, should go. When Ariadne heard the cheering, she opened the door. So can you see that Ariadne heard the cheering is one part of the sentence, one clause. The other part is she opened the door. So our comma will need to go in between those two parts. So that means just after cheering. Okay, Ooh, I do that just after cheering. So this bit in particular putting the commas in where you've started your sentences with conjunctions is definitely trickier. But you might challenge yourself as a final thing today by just having a go with that. Right, and then we are done. Well done everyone for all of your hard work this week. Um, your teachers, we all love seeing uh, the work that you've done. So if you would like to send uh, your work to your teacher, then that would be absolutely brilliant. Okay, so well done everyone and have a nice weekend.